Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Grace Hub Discipleship Center's ministry here. Uh, this weekend, I will not be available, and we will not be having our regular service. So I am filming this for you in advance. It's actually Thursday morning, nice and sunny. And uh, I will be with you this weekend in spirit. Relationships, as we have come to know, can and will become quite complex. They are, in a sense, our Pandora's boxes of sharing reality beyond ourselves. Beyond ourselves is and will always be a significant aspect of what Christ has called us to be. Unfortunately, once the individual gets added into the mix, we battle between the self and the other always. If we can't strive for the other, how can relationships really work, truly work? How can family work for that matter? We were created by God's marvelous hands, not just as male and female, but for a greater purpose, a greater unity, harmony in the world that would shine the light of the kingdom of God once we have realized our commitment to respond to grace active in our lives. Relationships take work, but in turn produce fruit that is the beautiful aspect of truly realizing that we are children of grace and promise dedicated to the kingdom of God. Our relationship to God is both a personal relationship as well as to be familia. All in the family accounted for and accountable to one another. You hear that word a lot, accountability. Um, today I think we're kind of running off the, the uh, train rails uh, of being kind of lawless and not really wanting to be accountable, not only to one another, uh, but God, of course. When families are torn apart, what is the true root cause? There is some form of divide, a disconnection made against the other and most likely made for or on behalf of the self. Yes, it always comes to that nasty, unholy trinity of I, me, mine. Living for the self alone is a lonely existence, but our current culture caters to it over and above family, over and above unity, over and above God. Unity does not accommodate for the self and its agendas, needs, etc. How can we truly know joy, harmony, peace, and love if we cannot hold any commitment truly to anyone beyond ourselves? In regards to marriage, remembering mine, still only six years fresh. Yes, I, I'm still feeling like a little bit like a newlywed, I'd say. I made a commitment to love, care, and honor my wonderful husband, Phil. Our wedding even included Holy Communion, which in retrospect speaks even clearer to what sharing, sacrifice, and commitment mean living in, with, and through grace. Both my husband and I are devout Christians. Duh. I do believe that we follow the motto, the family that prays together stays together. We open our mornings in prayer as a couple with our two furry children sitting on top of us in bed. Every meal we share together not only begins in prayer, but we are always expressing our gratitude and thankfulness to, for one another, to one another, for being for each other. The unity and harmony we feel as a couple joined under the words of God, the words of grace, is that we are a team. Being a team is very important because we are human creatures who are individuals as well as we are now together. We are all in it together. Is a lovely sentiment that actually comes from the dark comedy of the early 1980s, uh, 1983, I believe, Brazil. Brazil uh, is that Monty Python classic um, and pretty dark uh, film where uh, in the movie, uh, We're All in It Together, was a billboard poster 
smattered across the miles of, of the these long fences. They had uh, all the highways had these uh, enormously tall high fences and we see some of that with uh, the concrete uh, barriers they have along the 294 and other other routes uh, throughout Illinois. Um, the, these fences, these miles of fences masked this barren wasteland created by the evils of socialized controlled capitalism. The film was in many ways a uh, masterpiece prophetically speaking against the evils of consumerism, political oppression, and desire. The main character or hero of the film tried to forsake his job and pursue a, a mate he met while working for the Ministry of Information Retrieval. I thought that was very clever. Uh, it's a sort of their joke on the FBI. Um, basically, the entire film shows uh, Sam Lowry, the character, scheming and maneuvering against the government to pursue this woman he fell in love with online. It was a journey of the self to a certain extent, as well as a cynical comment on how relationships become complex in the first place. The end of the film is steeped in ironic tragedy, for the woman in pursuit is killed, or she was deleted, as well as he is left essentially in a vegetative state. Um, they, I guess, gave him a frontal lobe lobotomy, or that was how they uh, tortured him to confess that he went against the government, etc. Commitment and relationship uh, were both failures, in a sense, here with this film. He was not a team player, but someone working against the horrors of an oppressive political system, where care, concern, and love for neighbor didn't truly exist, yet alone for God. He pursued an empty desire that would be deleted. He uh, basically thinks he, he had saved her so they could run away together and escape. Um, and being that he worked for uh, Ministry of Information Retrieval, he uh, hit delete on his computer. And he, he came back and said, I deleted you. Now we can live happily ever after. Well, they, they burst in the doors and they kill her. And then they take him. I hope you can hear the strong metaphors here in regards to marriage and family beyond ourselves. Our marriage and purpose as the Church of Christ in this world, but not to be of it, was created for creating grace and living faithfully renewed into promise. This is a greater commitment to love God and neighbor while working together in unity and harmony. The world that the character Sam lived in in the movie Brazil was beyond representing the fallen state of humanity. I mean, everything about that film is profound and just, whoa, over the top. It was in many ways as if no one there knew of redemption, knew of any kind of hope, but only knew of an illusion of these things. This is the most difficult thing our hearts have to struggle with as disciples of Jesus moving forward into being and purpose with a renewed commitment, a new-natured commitment that, as the scriptures say, therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. Jesus was, of course, talking towards the institution of marriage and the problems of divorce as how it was understood back then. There was a uh, rigid patriarchal structures of uh, how uh, a man and a woman are uh, joined together. Um, it's very different than what we have today. Let's just put it like that. But the profound truth, all caps, behind those words speak towards the intentions of our hearts in living together, moving forward together as a part of a greater family the family of God. The very last few verses Jesus imparts to the Pharisees and the crowds that have gathered reveal the profound truth of our role 
In creation as children of grace and promise, Jesus says, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms laid his hands upon them and blessed them, blessed the children. Our old natured ways of living, realizing relationship cannot be in bondage to the law, but must be obedient to the gospel, which is centered through Christ in dedication to a greater purpose beyond ourselves. We need one another to humbly realize the gospel imperative which builds those wonderful relationships, which builds up the notion of family, which builds up and reveals the beauty of living grace, compassion, kindness, mercy, love, concern, etc. When we gather together here in this place as, a, as the body, that notion of family is to be and become so much more. Ministry together is, all caps is, living into being the true bride of Christ. For we are committed to one another and to Christ Jesus who gave us more than we could ever realize. That's important. I'm sure there will be many a sermon today or on Sunday. <laughs> that will avoid speaking the truth of the truth of what these texts are truly about. There is a difference between preaching the word as a chaplain to culture or as a pastor for Christ, which I try to be a pastor for Christ. This is how easily we shy away and in essence divorce ourselves from the gospel's imperatives, truth of being and purpose for our lives. We must remember our Sovereign Lord is not only our Father and Redeemer, but Creator, the High Priestly Leader of the Kingdom of God. Being married to another person is a wonderful experience, speaking from experience. Being married to the cause of Christ and His Gospel of Grace, a new natured purpose for the world, is the greatest goal, is to be our greatest goal, should be our greatest goal. The moment our hearts are led and shaped obediently to the gospel of grace and goodness is when we will know deeply what harmony, joy, peace, unity, love, etc. truly mean in divine reflection. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, may we know true commitment. May we come to realize true unity as children of grace, children of promise. Help us to know our place and role in this world for your gospel imperative. May we never not be grateful for all good gifts you have given us, for all the bondage that you have freed us from. May we strive together to rebuild and renew under you. Amen. Well, I look forward to uh, having service next Sunday, 8 a.m. And uh, thank you for listening, and God bless your patronage to this ministry. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.